Okay, brilliant. Hopefully you've seen that first, uh, the instructional video and made a paper airplane, maybe you've even test flown it. Um, we're just going to talk about the physics of this paper airplane, because how exactly does a paper airplane stay in the air long enough and uh, move forward and glide so far as to um, get massive, massive distances? So here's how. Okay, I'm gonna try and keep this simple. It's not that complicated. Um, so here's my picture of a paper airplane uh, with the thin slither of the wing shown here. Now the air is not moving, but the paper airplane is, flowing, is moving through the air. So it's forcing the air to flow around it. So we can basically think of it as doing a similar thing to the ball, okay? So the, air, the paper airplane is kind of going down and across at the same time so it's kind of going down in this direction so we're going to draw um that the plane has some velocity this is a velocity arrow not a force arrow so that's showing the direction of the plane moving so the air that flows past the plane flows in this direction okay and it hits the plane and the some of the air gets forced over this wing okay and it's very subtle i could have exaggerated a bit more Okay, I'm only going to draw three layers there. Um, and the air that flows under the wing um, doesn't really have to move at all. So the paper aeroplane can force this air, can squeeze the air over the, over the wing, causing it to actually move faster. Okay, because not only is the plane just sliding past it, but the air has to be squeezed over as well. So that tiny little bit of extra movement means that these air particles are actually flowing faster than these ones uh, when we compare it to the wing. Or another way you could say it is that this surface is moving faster past the air than this surface. OK, but it's, it's easier to think about the air because it's actually the air that's being squeezed. So that causes lift because of the Bernoulli effect. So the Bernoulli effect causes lift. And the lift is in that direction because it's it's kind of perpendicular at right angles to the um, to the wing. So it's kind of in that direction. OK, so we've got some lift in that direction. Of course, we've got weight pulling down on the plane as well. So these are force arrows now. And we've got a little bit of drag. So I've drawn that free body diagram on top of the plane. I'm just going to repeat it to the side just so we can see it a little bit more clearly. So we have weight pulling down. We have uh, lift pulling up like that. And then to balance these two, because that one's going down, that one's going up and to the left. We need one that's going up and to the right just a little bit, which is the drag. OK, so these forces are balanced which means that when, when the paper aeroplane is in nice stable flight, okay, so it's not just after we've thrown it, but it's that last bit of the flight where it just glides smoothly down to the ground, it's not actually accelerating. It's moving at a constant speed in a straight line, okay, which means that the velocity doesn't change during that stage of the flight. So, what we've got to ask ourselves now is how can we use this information to uh, describe and explain the flight of the plane to make some changes to our plane and then to um, explain the changes that we observe. And that's what the majority of this uh, assignment is all about. So here's what I would like you to do. First thing I would like you to do is decide which paper aeroplane you're going to test first. It can be this one. If you've already made this one, this one's ideal. I would like you to throw it maybe three times and try and throw it in exactly the same way three times. And I would like you to describe what happens. So when you're describing what happens, maybe talk about the shape of the flight. Does it go up? and then kind of stop, turn around and then plummet. Okay, we call that stalling when it stops. 
does it fly smoothly all the way in like an arc? Does it drop to the ground? Does it um, undulate? Does it kind of go up and then down and then up and then down like that? OK, so you can use those kind of words to describe the flight. Another way you can describe the flight and probably the most important way be, um, because we can make direct comparisons is um, by measuring how far it's gone. So I would do that just by pacing. OK, don't worry about getting a, um, a long tape or anything like that. Just pace it. Um, write down how many paces. OK, uh, some of your paces might be bigger than others, um, but we'll just trust that we're, we're making our own comparison so we can pace. OK, now when I threw this outside earlier, there was a little bit of a breeze. So you might want to write down if there's a little bit of a breeze as well, because that might affect your results. And I managed to throw this 30 paces. OK, so I threw this down my street 30 paces. So those are the kind of things I would write down about my initial test. And I haven't changed anything about the plane each time. I haven't changed anything about the throw. After you've done that, you're going to make a change. Now, this is where we have to be really scientific. Only make one change. You can make more changes later, but make one change. Throw the plane with the new change. Describe the flight of the plane. Later, we're going to explain the difference between the flight after you made the change and the flight before you made the change. Then I would like you to make the same change again and try it again. And then I'd like you to make the same change a third time and try again and each time writing down a description. So the distance that the plane has gone in paces and uh, describe the flight and we're going to explain that later so that's one experiment if you then wanted to change something else about the plane you could and you could uh, do a, a second experiment and even a third experiment because we've got two hours to do this and that would be fine so what kind of changes are we talking about uh, I'm gonna I will show you and then I'll write them down in a list so one change you could make for example is you could change the uh, weight. So if you're going to change the weight, the simplest thing to do is to add paper clips. So you can add paper clips. Um, you can try and like roughly find the, the center of weight by uh, balancing it on your finger and where there's like the tipping point where it tips from one way to the other, which is about there for me. Um, I'm going to add my paper clip to there. OK, you should add your paper clip on to there so that it's in the so it's still balanced and you could keep adding weight and see what happens. We kind of probably expect it to hit the ground sooner. Um, you might want to put a weight on the first one and move the weight. So one, a different change you could make is to have the paper clip near the front and then have the paper clip near the middle and then have the paper clip near the back. So that's a different change that you could make. Another change you could make is uh, just by changing the, the wing. Um, you could just gently curl the wing tips up. That's one change. You could have them flat like your test, or you could curve them down. OK, so those are that's a, another type of change you could make. Another type of change you could make is the way you throw it. So you could throw it flat on your test and then you could throw it up at roughly 30 degrees. And then 45 degrees and then 60 degrees. Um, so the angle that you launch it could be one test. Um, the speed that you launch it could be a different test, although that one's probably the trickiest one to actually uh, work out and describe the changes. So to be honest, I would probably avoid that one. Angle's good, weight's good, position of the weight is good, changing the wingtips is good. And another one you might want to do is you might want to just test different designs. OK, so that's your challenge. Um, make the plane. Test it. Make one change. Vary that uh, variable. So that change will co is a variable. Um, so if it's weight at the front, middle, back, for example, wing ticks up, wing ticks down, for example, test each time, write down your description of the flight. 
And the last thing we're going to do is to explain it. And you're going to explain it using this idea here. OK. So, for example, let me show you that it, we'll work with the diagram on this. OK, so, for example, if your plane takes a nosedive, OK, that means that it could be that the weight is further forward and that's causing uh, the front to be pulled down more uh, and the lift to actually be lifting the back up. So it tur turns the whole plane around and it accelerates downwards. If the opposite happens, then it could be that the weight is behind the lift, OK, or that the lift is moved further forward, which can happen by changing the wingtips up and down. We can change the position of the lift. So if the lift is in front of the weight, that would cause the nose to come up before they kind of equalize again. And if a plane's trying to go up against against gravity, that's likely to slow it down and then it stalls, um, which is when you get the kind of undulating effect. Um, so by varying the position of the center of, uh, by, by the, pa the position of the paperclip, we're actually moving the weight backwards and forwards. By playing with the wing tips, we're moving the lift backwards and forwards. We're also changing the drag which will slow the plane down, which will, uh, and a slower plane will have less lift. So these are all things that you can think about when you're trying to explain the things that you've seen. So quick reminder, um, the changes you can make, we're gonna call uh, variables you could change. And this is the independent variables. And remember, you can only have one independent variable per test, although you are welcome to do more than one test. So you could have, you could change the weight by adding paper clips. You could change the center of gravity by moving the paper clips backwards and forwards. You could change the um, lift and drag by playing with the wingtips, um, or you could change the angle of the launch, which would change uh, the height and the velocity that the plane has um, before it gets into this nice stable pattern. Okay, and for each one, you're gonna measure the distance and you're going to describe the flight. Um, and then you're going to use this to explain it in your conclusion. So good luck with that. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing some really nice write-ups. Uh, good luck. Bye.